Hi everyone and welcome to a video on the brief history of America's role throughout World War II, split into three categories. Now because I'm probably uploading this to YouTube like my previous video about Ferdinand Foch on my old channel, I'm probably going to set it out a bit more like a YouTube video with fancy editing like this. With all that said, enjoy the video. So I'm making this project with a friend whose name I won't say, but let's just call him Ben. Now, Ben has a genuine unhealthy relationship with planes, so when we were set this project, of course, he chose America because, well... And that's how I've ended up making this video. Thanks, Ben. Honestly, why couldn't you just be a normal kid and not make me do a video on planes? We've started with Pearl Harbor. You might have heard of it because it was that disastrous event which brought America into the war. America was neutral in World War II until December 7th, 1941, so the attack on Pearl Harbor. It was a huge disaster for America by forcing them to go to war. Now, this is America, and this little island here is Hawaii, also part of America. Now Hawaii has a harbour called Pearl Harbour. Japan, which is this island here, wanted to take control of Southeast Asia because it was World War II and they wanted power. Japan had sided with Germany and Italy, the Axis powers, in September 1940, while at the same time America had gone against Japan because they sided with Britain and France, the Allied powers, during World War I, so of course there would be some tension between Japan and the USA, even if the USA was neutral. As well as this, President Roosevelt removed the US Pacific Fleet base from San Diego in California to Pearl Harbor in May 1940. In November 1940, in fact, the two-term presidency office was broken and Roosevelt was elected for a third term. Oh great Roosevelt, if only you could see the state of the USA now. Basically what happened was, Japan wanted control of Southeastern Asia for more power. Japan and the USA had been threatening each other for a while, such as America saying, Hey, can you please just stop with the violence? If you don't, we might have to take action. To which Japan said, uh, how about no? So Japan ignored America's request to withdraw their forces. What did they do instead? Yep, who wants to be a millionaire is back. Hello YouTube, my name's Treble, and welcome to a Newcastle United preview. That is right, I'm doing a Newcastle video because guess what? I'm a Newcastle fan. And I think that's going to be appropriate to put a video up, or two, or maybe three or four, I don't know how many I'm going to make. Alright, I've made it. I support a championship team. The answer is C. Sat down with a nice cup of tea. No, stop. Stop, right? Everyone knows they blew up Pearl Harbor, okay? It's not that funny anymore. Japan wanted to take out America's threatening naval forces so they could get more powerful, okay? Let's just be serious for this video. No puns, no jokes, just facts. Oh, sorry, Sakono. Back to the topic at hand. Yes, Pearl Harbor was unfortunately bombed by Japanese planes on December 7th, 1941, killing more than 2,300 servicemen and 70 civilians. 21 US ships were sunk or damaged and 188 aircraft were destroyed. President Roosevelt called this day December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. Of course, Japan bombing the US naval fleet in Pearl Harbor meant America getting involved in World War II. The day after Roosevelt's speech and declaring war on Germany, Germany declared war on them. So I guess this meant a full on world war now that America had joined the Allies. For some proper history skills, you might fall asleep now, but trust me, after this, it's gonna get good. What was the effect of the attack on Pearl Harbor? 
of Pearl Harbor started the Pacific War, a war that Japan would lose badly. The attack itself was no fail. Blah, 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 blah. Although only chance saved the American aircraft carriers, their survival was a major blow. However, the primary problem with the attack was the planning. Had Japan focused beyond the fleet and targeted the crucial shore facilities and oil reserves, it could have inflicted far greater and more lasting damage. As it was, of the ships damaged or sunk on December 7, 1941, only three, the Arizona, Oklahoma and Utah, were damaged beyond repair, and Utah was already obsolete. Japan gave America the chance to rebuild its fleet and re-enter the fight with brand new kit. Even worse, rather than crushing American morale as planned, the attack united the country behind Roosevelt and behind the war. Americans were incensed by Japan's failure to declare war until later that day. The sneak attack fueled American determination to fight on, even in the face of the setbacks of early 1942. What this basically means is, Japan, what on earth are you doing? You just showed America everything you're capable of, so they know what to expect, you fool. Pretty much Japan was absolutely thrashing America from 1942 to 1945, bombing all the naval assets and taking over islands and getting more powerful and stealing all their pizza and it was horrendous. America threw everything they had at them. At a few battles they came close, such as when the IGN Yamato, Japan's pride and joy and the largest battleship ever built, went on a suicide mission at Okinawa and was blasted to pieces by the American Navy on April 7, 1945. But Japan won nearly every time. And a few times they didn't, the Japanese leader had to commit a ritual suicide as a sign of honour to avoid the shame of living as a bad leader. Damn, the Japanese are dark. However, things all started to turn around at one particular major battle, perhaps the most significant battle in the Pacific War, the Battle of Okinawa, from April the 1st to June the 22nd in 1945. This was when Allied forces invaded the island of Okinawa and engaged the Japanese in the bloodiest battle of the Pacific War. Here's some footage which I may have illegally copied, but oh well. As we fly ahead, headed for the beach. Debark from our ships. We landed on Okinawa and we had no idea of what kind of resistance we were going to encounter. The fighting on Okinawa came to a close as American forces absolutely destroyed the island's Japanese defenders. Those that weren't taken prisoner or died in the fighting subjected themselves to ritual suicides. Understanding that defeat was imminent, Japanese Lieutenant General Mitsuru Ushima also committed ritual suicide with his staff. Jesus Christ, just stop with the suicides. So, on June 22, 1945, the Battle of Okinawa came to a close as it was clear that America had won. and Okinawa had become the staging area for the Allied invasion of the Japanese mainland. To round it all up, basically what happened was that Britain, France and practically everyone else were fighting against Hitler and the Nazis, while America and Japan had their own little squabble. Did America really make a difference to the outcome of the war then? Well, because Japan was allied with Germany, their defeat would surely affect them, so... Uh, yeah, I think they did make a difference, yeah. I mean, if America had lost, then Japan would have gone back to invading Southeast Asia and gained more territory, meaning the Axis Force would have gotten more power, so Hitler might have had a higher chance of winning, so yeah. Okay, bye.